quickly ask you then, Taro, uh, in terms of these solutions put on the table, do you see the implementation of this solution or do you see a situation where government around the world will do the talk but when it comes to delivery, we still have the same issue of the funds are not disbursed on time, uh, implementation or domestication of these agreements don't really happen and then the assemblies of those countries don't put it into law and enact it and so on and so forth. Yeah, the problem has always been with the implementation and this has been going on every year. The government attend this program, they come back, but the major issue is the implementation. And like you said, we have some positive, positive response, but the issue is the implementation. Are the developing country, are they really ready to implement some of this? Are the chances there for them, like you know, the big player, the Ch uh, China and the US, they give the final decision, they take the major action, and most countries look up to them that, okay, this time around, at Lima, at least, I know about three major points, the Global Climate Fund, then we also talk about the national adaptation, because when we talk of climate change, we look at adaptation, how are people adapting to the issue of climate change, because we do have a climate change, climate change, but how are people adapting and the third issue has to do with education. How can national government even include this in their national education policy? For instance, let's drive it down locally now, bring it down to the issue of legal state. We have the climate change clubs in school, but you only see this on the official day they launch the program. If you go back there now, how many of them are even implementing it? Now we are even talking about local level. The implementation is always the issue. Okay, yeah, so you, you know, I just wanted to add to that because at the plenary session there in Lima, the um, UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon said that you know he is deeply concerned that collective actions does not match common responsibilities. Um, let's bring it down to Nigeria. What are we doing? How much of the responsibilities are we taking up to make sure that, um, in terms of you know, mitigating some of the effects, and of course, where it can be prevented, we take actions. Yeah, like, like I said, bringing it down to Nigeria, you have different actors acting different way, and if you look at the country generally, for instance, if you come down to Lagos as an example, you know Lagos states, they have a unit, even at the federal level, we have the climate change unit, but what are these units doing? Are they working in relation with the state government? Are they working with the local government? Like now in Nigeria today, we have about 774 local government, and don't be so, it won't be surprised that out of these 774 local government, we have just one local government out of the 774 that has a climate change unit. What are the rest doing? That is a local government, they're not talking about the state government. But the issue has to do with. I'm the, curious to know which local government that is. I'm one of the few local governments. They are that the only the, one in the They are the, the only country. local government in Nigeria today. That has a climate change unit whereby anybody can work in. Because a lot of people hear about climate change. What is climate change all about? Now, this is December period. Some years back, you see the Amatan. You see, but nowadays, people are wondering what is happening. The, the high rate of emission and so on, you have a lot of vehicles on the road. You have a lot of, even from the waste we generate. In fact, the, the gases, the maintained gases from waste is even worse than the vehicular emission and so on. So people keep on asking. You talk about climate change every year, your government, you have that delegation going to all this club, but when they come back. So that's why the local government decided to create a climate change whereby even a lame man, anybody can work in. What is happening to our weather today? We are about climate change. My son or my daughter just came back to school, came back from school, and they talk about climate change. So they come around there okay. to make inquiry. So this is taking it down to the grass whereby people will be able to know what are some of the implications. Of their, of their action, action. sometimes. On then at the same time, talk about the adaptation. Okay, if there's a change, how can you quickly adapt to this new situation? Okay, Mr. Arik Babu, what areas do you think Nigeria should be concerned about in terms of climate change? Nigeria should be really concerned about climate change because we are a major frontier for impacts of climate change. We are bounded here in the south by the Atlantic Ocean, so we, we could easily fall victims of um, coastal erosion, sea level rising. Um, we, are, we have many frontline states up north that are already eroded by deserts. We have various impacts of climate, and we are also witnessing the secondary impacts um, in terms of some of the conflicts that we are seeing in parts of the country where we are having agro-pastoralist conflict. People are fighting over resources that keep dwindling. 
Nigeria as a country is unfortunately a bunch of um, a, a bundle of contradiction when you look at how climate change is affecting us and the opportunities we are missing. We are suffering adverse effects of something we didn't contribute to. Unfortunately, we are refusing to take part in benefiting in the global attention around climate change. There is a lot of support, there is a lot of concern. Nigeria is not effectively positioning itself as a regional power in the global climate discourse. Nigeria as a country is not acting sufficiently in house. For instance, Nigeria is a major um, corporate when it comes to flaring gas. gas yes. And we know that the gas we are flaring is sufficient to power West Africa. Now here is a country that is, has a lot of energy deficits. Here is a country because if Nigeria takes care of flaring gas, if Nigeria improves its transportation system across all the cities, if Nigeria provides energy, we would be able to make major commitment in terms of emission cut like China and the US because these are areas where we unnecessarily contribute to global emission. But nobody is even asking Nigeria presently. Of course, that is part of the debate now. The industrialized countries are saying everybody must contribute to emission reduction. Okay, when that argument comes, Nigeria's economy is heavily dependent on climate and issues around climate change. We are a fossil fuel economy. And we are seeing the impact of the reduction, I mean, the global downturn in uh, fuel prices mm -hmm. is affecting our economy. Unfortunately, we have left our agriculture, which has been the mainstay of our advancement prior to oil, oil boom. We have left it at the mercy of climate. So, so if I, can I just interject for a second? While you were talking, I was thinking along the lines of what kind of delegation do we send as a country to some of this conversation and talks around the world regarding uh, climate change. Because that will determine yeah. the yeah. kind, the quality of conversation and response yeah. we get. Yeah. Um, it, it's sad to note that Nigeria is not doing enough in that regard. Uh, with all due respect to the gentlemen and ladies who come from the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of External Affairs and some other ministries, and um, we have some experts, professors who are grounded in some of these issues. Nigerian professors. Nigerian professors. But the fact is that